situation. My girlfriend, she's a goy, a gentile who's not converting. Oh, I'm verklempt. What should I do? Nice. You have a very interesting look. Your last name, McDowell. What is that? It's Scottish and Irish. Right. I love your curly hair and your olive skin. I'm not supposed to ask you this, but what's your background? I can be or play whatever you want me to be. Uh, thanks. I got a half Nigerian nigga to play Omar from Crenshaw. Girl, know about five different motherfuckers who could have played Omar who are actually from Crenshaw. <laughs> Hold on a second. Someone's here. Hi. Hi. Are you here for the commercial audition? Susan Keller sent me. <sighs> Stupid ass. Um, can I call you back? All right, go back. Um, yeah. Actually, we're looking for someone who's ethnically ambiguous. Noticeably ethnically ambiguous, you know, uh, a Vin Diesel type. I mean, you can come in and read, but honestly, I just don't want to waste your time. No, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Thanks, you're so welcome. Biti, I love you. No. You love hookah. You love hanging out with your boys. You never liked them. You think they're a bad influence. No, 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 no. Don't make this about me. You came home late last night. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You're Miss Nuna. Mentahara. Allah, you have been the gold of the Hey. Hi, I, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. I, I assumed you spoke Arabic. Yeah, I didn't know we had to speak Arabic for this role. Huh. You're not Moroccan. You're not even North African, are you? Wow. And you're auditioning for this role. Well, I'm non-white. And it's hard to get roles when you're non-white. Okay. What you don't get is that it's not enough to be non-white. It's not enough to look the part. Do you know what it's like being Arab? Do you know what it's like having Arab parents? Do you know what it's like to feel the influence of racism every single day? No, you don't. Raj, fancy meeting you here. This guy, Ryan, of course. Yo, you see my post yesterday? Three auditions and one callback. No, I missed it. How'd they go? Good, man, good. My fucking callback? That play disgraced again. But I almost booked that role we both auditioned for last week. Strong-willed Middle Easterner. Hmm. Terrorist number two. <laughs> Mike got it. Michael Thomas. Puerto Rican Michael Thomas got it. No, you're thinking of Miguel Toms. I'm talking about half Dominican, half Greek Mike Thomas. Half Greek? I thought he was half Turkish. No, no, he played a Turk in a wheelchair in that Netflix series. <laughs> yeah, of course. able body playing disabled. <laughs> Wait, who was it that played that Incan warrior in that History Channel thing? Mo Pilly, he's part Filipino. He was just here. Of course. Didn't he also play Persian? No, you're thinking of Jake. 
Check. Dylan Hall. <laughs> A little bit. What would you have thought if I played the Prince of Persia? I would not have thought twice about it. You're a POC, you could totally play Persian. But shouldn't it be someone from Persia? Or at least nearby, to give it the stamp of authenticity? You crazy. Look, for me, if you look the part in your non-white, I'm good. I'll make your money, boo-boo. Raj? Hey Ryan, good to see you. Come on in. Hi, nice to see you too. Okay, Ryan McDowell. Interesting. Let's see what you got. I pass for white. I always have. But I'm not. Not 100%. And I was ashamed that I wasn't. See, I'm part Fijian. Part black. I don't recall the exact moment I started to identify as biracial. But I do remember a vivid memory that helped me refine it. When I was 12, my mother took me to Fiji for the first time. And I'm getting to see my family. All different looks. White, black, and everything in between. And I'm getting so engrossed meeting my family that I didn't notice my mother had vanished. Gone. Immediately I had a feeling of fear and frustration. I was scared. But these people, Sensing my agitation made me feel at ease. And my fear turned into warmth. I felt at home. Safe. Most importantly, that I belonged. Within a few hours, my mother had returned without saying where she had been and why. At the time, I didn't know why she'd left. It only dawned on me years later. She was teaching me about my identity, my background. She was showing me my people. She never preached about me being biracial. Maybe she wanted to see how the world would view me. Maybe when she saw the world was viewing me as white, she needed to take action. It worked. Because the shame of my background has become the strength of my present. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. We're looking for someone who's under six feet tall. But you're good. Got a great look. I understand. Thank you. Hello? Oh. Hi. Oh. Wow, that's... That's great, thank you. Wait. What role would I be playing? Oh. Even, even though I'm not, uh, that... I see. 